Okay, welcome back to my Let's Play of the Seventh Continent on Tabletop Simulator. Things are not looking good, my friends. This could be a very short video indeed. Um, things were looking up at the start of the last one, but I made some stupid decisions uh, under the wrong assumptions, and now basically our board got wiped. I mean, all the locations will be there when we go back. I mean, that's how it works. But um, yeah, we're in this like little cave. I could go north to do some shit there, but I know we're supposed to go south. And I was hoping that the these baskets on these like cables would take us to like where I needed to go to win. But no, this was very much a big mistake. So... Yeah, we've got two cards left in the deck, and really, it didn't look like there was a whole lot of food to be found around here. But, uh, I guess we'll see what happens. Ravenous, your stomach growls angrily. Hunger is beginning to take its toll. Uh, each character is tired, takes a 106. If no character is tired, take an 03, an XP. Alright, I'll take a free XP. Think I won't. Uh, all right, that's that. I feel like this should have all been... Yeah. I feel like this should have all been... All these should be returned, but if I push... put this here and click return, it goes to this deck, which is not where it should go. It should be going over on this deck. Um. But I don't think there's like a cool, easy way for me to, whoop. Whoop, no, we didn't want to do that. Uh, we did want to do that. But there was a... No, fuck. Well, now where did that go? There was the car with the old man that said, do this, add plus 32. Shit. Why did I push that? Alright, well, what are... This got returned. <sighs> um, yeah, I think these all should get returned, but I don't think there's a fast, easy way to do that. Oh, this should also been returned. So, I don't know. I guess whatever. We'll leave it for now. Alright, 390. So this is our winch back. One card with one success. Not a whole lot I can do about that. It's a little hand action. <laughs> a little hand action, if you know what I'm saying. Um, that's definitely a failure, so that's good. Something seems to have gotten stuck, preventing your advance. We turn back and we get a 108 card. That's great. I'm poisoned. How does that work? I got poisoned by the vapors. Okay, well, this gets returned. And uh, this failed, so that was a perfect waste. And now we draw the last card. And it's also not a success. Actually, I could have taken this. And I could take this, which still doesn't help. So we get the other 108 card, which now... <laughs> this is a discard. So I don't know how that works with discards. Uh, that's going to be... There are no card. The randomly revealed cards from the discard... And if you get a curse, you immediately lose. Okay. 
So now, wait, no, this goes here. So now we randomly reveal two cards from here. And if they're a curse, we lose. Okay, we're not a curse. But now we're in the curse deck. Or we're in the discard deck. So now whenever I draw from the discard deck for, you know, whatever reason, skill test, whatever. If I get a curse card, it's game over. Uh, alright. Do it again. Still a failure. So give me another 108. Okay, another poison. Okay. Uh, hey, let's do it again. Oh, another failure. Well, give me that 108. Hey, I'm poisoned again. Except now I have to show two cards. Let's show those two cards. Okay. Uh, let's try it again. It's game over. <laughs> oh, God. That's it. That's game. Fuck. I could not get in the basket ever again. I just couldn't make it happen. Shit, man. What a wild fucking game, man. It's crazy. So I died in this cave on the other side of the baskets because Ferdinand just couldn't... Or what, what was his name? Was his name Ferdinand? Yeah, Ferdinand. He just couldn't make it happen. Just couldn't make it happen. I think I was kind of close overall. I think I was kind of close. Uh, sorry, let me just see here. What are the other characters involved here? You got HP Lovecraft. Um, so... During any action, he can discard a Serenity card in order to change curses to successes. It's not bad. Uh, and then he's got some interesting skills here, obviously very related to Cthulhu Mythos. This lets- oh, craft some bone stuff, look at that. It's not a very good piece of gear, but, you know. Oh, he's good at thinking. He's good at thinking. Dark sign. Oh, uh, this lets him shuffle back curse cards into the deck, because he likes curses, I guess. Oh, and he can use this to spend XP from anywhere. That's not too shabby. Dark Regeneration. If you draw at least one curse card, you may return freezing, frightened, hungry, nauseated, or tired. Dang, that's pretty cool. Okay, so that's uh, HP Lovecraft. Victor Frankenstein. What the fuck? He can hold one extra skill card, can discard a will card. In order to grab back one of his character specific cards from the discard. Okay, okay. He can do a special action at a grave. Randomly take 25 cards from the discard and shuffle them back into the action deck. Holy shit. I feel like at 399 must be pretty bad for that to be... Uh, that's a really good benefit. <laughs> um, he can do any craft action with minus one card. That's awesome. If you have a card with the keyword monster in your hand. And discard this to... Oh, yeah, okay. And a bone crowbar. Wow. Wow, that's really good. Any craft action, minus two cards and or a success and a seven. Damn. Oh, so this doesn't actually send it back. Of course not. So I picked, like, the lame character, I guess. 
uh, Dmitry Gorchkov. Oh, he can ignore the card dump from a, uh, an injury, whatever. Okay, wow. Yeah, there's a lot of... He's more combat-oriented, clearly. Okay. Keelan McCluskey. Oh, she's all about plants. She loves the herbal mixtures. Oh, she's got that symbol on this card. That's cool. Oh, so any action, she can add three cards to it. You know, just in case something fucks up. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, this would be... This would have been great for getting in the baskets. This would have been perfect. She's... You have to be a scholar to climb into a fucking basket, Ferdinand. Phileas and Jean. There are two characters. Phileas Fogg and Jean Passepartout. What a dream team. That's cool. So you can lower the number of cards draw and increase the number of successes. So for however much you lower the draw, that's how much you increase the successes required, which is the same thing that you can do if you have other players involved. Um, but when there's other players involved, they can, um, they can contribute their inventory and things like that to the test, so it's worth it. Uh, um. Solo, I don't know how great that is. Okay, okay. Discard this during a mandatory action to get two insta successes. Oh my god. And I'm not sure what that means. Three red? Three red? What is three red? Mm, that ain't no symbol I've ever seen. Must be some expansion shit. They can make a cushion. Again with this red thing. Yeah, that must be expansion. And then you could also be Amelia Earhart if you're interested in that. Surviving. Oh, look at that. Mechanical engineering stuff. Yeah. You, you can repair an item to add three pips to its durability. Mmm. Solitary is very good. Solitary as a solo player is just adding two successes with no downside. That's nice. Mm-hmm. Well, keep believing lets you discard a curse and draw another one. Okay. Yeah. Um, then for all the expansion stuff... I mean, I wouldn't even, like... There's no reason to really get even involved with that for a while. You got these other curse cards you can do. And each one has their own... Clue. And, uh, you know, these purple banner numbers sort of influence the, uh, what cards you can draw and stuff like that. So, like, this, if I'd ever encountered that symbol, I would have added plus seven to it and gotten a different card. And that would have been likely very specifically related to winning the, the scenario. What's interesting, though, is that you can, you can just play with one curse, which is what I did, just Voracious Goddess. So you can just play with one of these, or you can play with multiple of them at the same time. And in order to win, you have to... You have to f cure yourself of each of them in the, in, the, in the game. I guess the question I would have... Well, you know, these curses don't seem to alter a whole lot. 
Oh no, okay. Well, the Bloody Hunt starts on the same one that I started on, but this one starts on 048. This one starts on 123. Uh, um, this one would start on 38. This one would start on 149. So you start in different places. You're going to... You have different objectives. I mean, this, you know, I was just trying to follow this map, but this one, you need to open this chest. So you're doing a lock action, five cards, 11 successes. And then who knows what exactly will happen when you get 181. So yeah, I guess it, yeah, it could be interesting. And the expansions add more areas. Um, This one looks especially wild, because this one looks like... I mean, look at look at this shit. It gets crazy. What's going on with this? I mean, this adds 459 more cards. Wild shit. Oh, yeah. It is really freaking good. This is going to be a shorter video. Oh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I had hoped that I could have made it a little bit longer and we could have just kept going, but, uh, no, that's, that's how it goes. And it's important that I be legit about it so you can understand. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a little bit of live and learn. Because now when I redo this scenario... I will know the importance of the grappling hook. I'll know not to fuck around with this, uh, these baskets. You know, I'll know about the movement rule and how e much easier that is. You know, we'll know a little bit more. We'll know about being able to reset hunting spots. What's weird is, like, I don't know what's stopping you from just... Saying, hey, let's reset the hunting spots. And we just pack things up and then we're like, all right, let's keep going. And then you unpack everything. <laughs> there is a downside, though, because the exploration cards all come back. They all get refreshed. The only thing that gets saved is the, the terrain card that all the characters are standing on. Because you all have to get together, you all stand on one spot, everything else on the board gets thrown back in its original decks. Which means that you have to re-explore where you're ever trying to get. So yeah, hunting things are reset, but so are all these maybe temporary events and things like that. Um, so you could do it just in the middle of a session if you wanted to reset the hunts, uh, but it's not entirely just good. It's not entirely just, yeah, it's, this is great. This is fine. Um... But yeah, uh, overall, really incredible stuff. Really incredible stuff. Just thinking about this whole journey that I went on. You know, on that starting island with that that bloated body and getting the gear wheels to take the submarine and uh, fighting off the hornets to get the grappling hook and like just all these sort of triumphs and failures you get along the way. It really is pretty incredible it's it's kind of like a tabletop rpg in a way where just the game is the uh, the dm it's like a point and click adventure in a way but with survival elements there's randomness to it but it's also something that you could just continue to learn and be better at i mean i'm sure for experienced players this scenario is just a joke and they could do it, you know, with their eyes closed. 
Um, but I think there is like. Thought there was, yeah, there's a hardcore mode. So there's an easy mode and there's a hardcore mode. Uh, what does the easy mode do? Just for my own education. If you lose the game, you banish this to apply the fo following effect. You shuffle all cards in the discard back into the action deck. That is definitely the definition of easy mode. So if I had had that, I would have just done this. And we would have kept going. And then I would have been able to climb in the basket just like that. It's nice to think that way, but we didn't play on easy mode. Um, and then there's hardcore mode. <laughs> I gotta see this because this seems this seems interesting because it is definitely is going to be way easier the second time you do a curse. Now the continent wants revenge. Any action that initially requires at least one success requires exactly one additional success. Holy shit. One extra success on every action. Uh, as long as it wasn't the zero. So that means for this, I'd need two. Oh man, that is hardcore mode. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, that'll do it. All right. Yeah, it's really good. I gotta say, I mean, it's ranked very highly. It's very ranked very highly for the thematic section. And yeah, I gotta say, it is compelling. I mean, overall, I don't know about its longevity, but I'm not overly concerned with that for a $60 game. Uh, and it's best, apparently, either one or two players. So I think that I might actually pick this one up. I think my mom would really dig this. Um, I think probably playing with uh, two people instead of one makes things quite a bit different. Um, because you're not going to be your inventory is definitely cut. You'd only be able to hold three blue cards and have three inventory items between you, which overall means much more inventory. Uh, overall, you're going from four to six. It's just spread between you two and six skill cards between the two of you. And you throw in the woven basket and you got quite a bit of inventory. But that's the thing is like, unless you perfectly stick together, uh, you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna be, each person is definitely weaker than a solo character. Um. Yeah, if more than one player is involved in the action, they may decide to lower the cost of the action by any numbers and increase the difficulty. Could have sworn it said something about you taking... here. If one or more characters is involved with an action, it's a failure. The active player must take a 100 card. They become paranoid. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's interesting. Paranoia. And you're just paranoid. <laughs> Until you're by yourself completely, and then you're no longer paranoid. So by, you know, this doesn't really do much on its own, but... You know, it's another state card. It's another thing that when this blue fucking symbol comes up, that's another card dumped. So it all adds up. And I assume one of these has a blue symbol on it. Yeah, there you go. That one does. That one does. Okay, so a couple of them do. 
Yeah, so paranoid's not good. So when you're doing an action together, you probably want to succeed. But I guess you always want to succeed. Yeah, it's a good game. It's definitely good. And, you know, there's plenty of expansions to keep making it interesting. Um, How many of these are official expansion? I assume all of them. Yeah, they got plenty. They've got the Icy Maze, the Forbidden Sanctuary, Swamp of Madness, Path of Repentance, Fear the Devourers, Facing the Elements, What Goes Up Must Come Down, which is this big one, The Flying Roots, Comfort Creatures, Veins of the Earth, Crystal Song, Forgotten Passages, and A Prison of Clouds. Now, why does it say a prison of clouds when that seems to be a part of what comes up? Hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure about that. But, yeah, that's a lot of expansions. The game's been out for four years now. I can only assume they're working on more expansions. And there's a lot of fan expansions, apparently. Oh no, there's not that many, but there are some. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it would be a little hard to... It's, it seems like a difficult game to design. Um... With... You know... The way that it's all interwoven. It's like Tales of Arabian Nights. I mean, you look at Tales of Arabian Nights as just a game and, and just like how this entire book of paragraphs is all interwoven and interconnected. And, and um, yeah, and you have like these cards. It's like, oh, if you do this action, draw this card. But if you do this action with this other card, add seven to it and take this card. And it's just all like very meticulously laid out. So I guess, yeah, trying to make a fan expansion that works with that deck as well seems just pretty darn tough. Um, yeah, it's good. It's definitely good. I'll probably get it. Uh, I'll probably buy it. I'll probably play it plenty. And I'm probably going to play it again on my own, just because I'm a little upset about how this ended. But yeah, it, it's very good. All right, I guess I'll leave it off there. That's enough rambling and dragging this out, so. Poor Ferdinand. He got so close. I think. Maybe not. I have no idea. My name is Mang. This has been the seventh continent on Tabletop Simulator. I'll see you fine folks around.